What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from dopetechdaily.com. Today, I'm in getting into my second weekly car vlog. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the HTC Ultra again because I got some feedback from people on the last vlog. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. I'm gonna get into Android Wear 2.0 today as well. Um, today I also uh, pre-ordered, well not pre-ordered because they're already shipping, the uh, LG Watch Sport. So I'm gonna have a review on that. It's supposed to come on Monday or Tuesday. In the Google Store, I got the blue color. I'll talk about that in a second as well. And I'm gonna pick up the LG Watch Style because my mom's been wanting a smartwatch, a new one. She wanted the Moto 360 in rose gold, and I told her that thing's kind of old. So wait till something new comes out. They got a rose gold model of the LG Watch Style. She's not too worried about using Android Pay or anything like that. So I'm gonna grab that for her. I would never use it because of the limitations. Anyway, just a couple things to run down. We'll see what else I can think of. I'm on my way home today driving home from work here in the garage of the university, rush hour traffic. Uh, we had HTC Ultra in the last vlog. I talked about the fact that I wasn't gonna pick it up because it's so expensive. A few people hit me up and basically said, why are you hating on HTC and all these things? It's not that I'm hating on HTC, it's just I don't particularly like the fact of any company uh, announcing a phone and then waiting two months to release it. Plus, they have no chance to compete with Samsung if they wait all the way until March, the S8's already gonna be announced that month. People are gonna wait. LG, same thing, they're not gonna release the G6 supposedly in the US until April, that's what we found out this past week. I think if LG waits to release the G6 uh, in the US at the beginning of April, they're not gonna sell very many phones here. Of course, I'll get one to review, but I don't know how many other people are gonna buy them. Um, I did consider, after all of people's comments, Thinking about picking up the HTC Ultra, you guys have to let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'd like to know. Uh, I looked on eBay and I noticed there's quite a few sellers that are selling the Taiwanese version, the international version, because they already launched the U Ultra over in Taiwan. And they've got all the colors for about 820 to 870 bucks. I'm thinking the only way I'm probably gonna get the phone is if I can get it early so I can give you guys some early coverage. Let me know if you guys are interested in some early coverage of the HTC Ultra. Should I buy one of these Taiwanese phones off eBay and get it in here? It says it comes in about a week. That's the only way I'm really going to do it. It's really not much more expensive than the US model. The bands do work, so if anybody else is thinking about picking one up, you can pick one of those up. It's going to work on T-Mobile or AT&T, obviously not on Verizon or Spent. So anyway, that's enough about the U Ultra. That was last time. But if you guys do want me to pick it up, comment below if you want to see that review on the channel. Uh, the next thing again, Android Wear 2.0 released this week official launch two new watches the lg watch sport and style as i mentioned there's two different colors of the watch sport we've got a titanium which is like a gray standard with a black band and then you got a pretty slick looking blue which i like is a dark blue the dark blue unfortunately is only available on the google store uh, so at&t and verizon are selling the titanium model but you cannot get the blue model from at&t or verizon pretty nice looking watch it's kind of nondescript it's kind of a plain watch to be honest but it's overall pretty nice it's a huge watch in terms of the lg watch sport um, i've seen quite a few videos of people who have reviewed it pictures on the wrist it looks huge but i've used the lg watcher bane uh, lte the lg watcher bane 2 lte it's not a huge deal for me i'm using my apple watch right now so it's going to be a big change from that when i get it in overall it looks pretty nice uh, verizon is taking until next month to ship these which again, I don't understand people announcing pre-orders and then waiting five weeks to ship something, especially a smartwatch, because you want to build the hype. Uh, so if you order one from Verizon, or even if you go in store today, you can't get one, you're gonna have to pre-order it. It comes on March 16th. I posted a tweet about that. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. AT&T, if you want to pick it up today, they have a bunch of them in store. Again, only the titanium gray model. I checked my local stores here around Phoenix. They do have them. I could go get one, but I really wanted the blue, so I decided to wait. They're also selling it, I think, for off-contract, a little more expensive than the Google Store. It's $379.99. Uh, Google is $349.99 if you buy it from them. I paid expedited shipping, so I ended up paying $380 or whatever anyway. Um, but I like the blue better. But if you want to get one from AT&T, a, people, people, a couple people posted on Twitter, the AT&T model is working on T-Mobile with a T-Mobile SIM. So T-Mobile is not carrying these, so there's an option for those of you who want to do that. Uh, I think the Google Store is your best bet, but I think a couple of those watches are sold out. I think the, both of the Sport models might be, last time I checked, I know the Titanium Gray Sport is sold out. So anyway, in terms of the overall features, Android Wear 2.0 brings a lot of new interface changes to the way that notifications are handled, the way the apps are situated, um, the way you interact with apps on your watch as well. 
For instance, on the old Android where you had the basic card style notifications where you would interact with those notifications and as you go through you're just swiping up or down or left or right to interact with those notifications. However, on the new version of Android where the hierarchy is more of a scroll vertically for everything to get more information, you're not gonna do a lot of left to right swiping. To uh, help with that, LG and Google, who helped them build the watches, they built in some scrolling mechanism into the button itself, so you can actually scroll, kind of like the digital crown on the Apple Watch, which I do find convenient. So I'm looking forward to using that. I think Android Wear 2.0 might be a little cumbersome for those of you, and I have previous gen Android Wear watches as well. When you get the update on your Huawei watch or your Moto 360 second gen, you're gonna find that you're swiping a whole lot more than you were before. And you might find that a little bit annoying because now there is no more of that left to right hierarchy. The other big change, at least to me, is that you no longer have the sort of, I don't know, side loaded, I don't know if side loaded is not the right word, but you no longer have companion apps on your watch for every single app on your phone that supports it. So if you install an app from the Play Store like Google Keep, you're not gonna get the Keep app automatically on your watch. You're gonna have to go to the Play Store on the watch and you're gonna have to install Google Keep from the Play Store on your watch. So that's a little bit of a new change. That's a little bit of a concerning change for some people because they automatically want that to sync up and some people probably won't realize this, uh, especially if you're used to the old version of Wear. But for someone like me, I have so many apps on my phone, I don't want every single app that's on my phone that has a Wear app to also be on my watch. I only use certain things on my watch and I like the ability to be able to pick and choose between what's going to go on my watch and companion apps on my phone. So that's a nice change. Uh, a few other things, of course, about the LG Watch Sport. You do have NFC, so now you can use Tap to Pay with Android Pay if your card, if your credit card supports that. Uh, you also have GPS on board and LTE, so you don't actually need to take your phone with you to get notifications or to make payments, so this is very convenient. For those of you especially who are into fitness, you don't wanna take your phone to the gym, you just take your watch with you and you'll be all set. Overall, it's a really nice complete package. I don't know if it's the prettiest package. It's definitely way too big for probably most women in terms of their wrists, because I've seen it on guys who have big wrists and it's still a huge watch. So it's probably a little too big for you um, if you have a smaller wrist, even if you're a guy. That brings me to the LG watch style, which is the smaller of the two devices. Um, and it also does not have NFC, which is unfortunate. It does not have LTE. It's being sold at the Google store. Uh, as well as at Best Buy in three colors. And I think it's a silver, uh, titanium gray, similar to the Watch Sport, and then a rose gold, which might appeal more to the ladies. That's the model I'm gonna get from my mom. Uh, do note that the rose gold model is $30 more expensive. So at Best Buy, you can pick up the other two, the silver and the titanium gray for $250. The rose gold's gonna run you uh, $279.99 at Best Buy. Um, the LG watch style, it's a nicer looking watch in terms of the overall size. It's probably closer to my Apple watch, so if I actually tried that one, I might like it better for the size. But you lose all those features, and the fact that they didn't include NFC is a real head scratcher. It has a much smaller battery, of course, because it has that slimmer profile. It's, it's just some, some, some strange choices. It doesn't really offer anything in terms of overall hardware um, that old Android Wear devices um, didn't already offer, so I don't see the point in upgrading unless you just don't have an Android Wear device, which is the case for my mom, or you want something for aesthetic reasons. She really wants the rose gold model because she likes the look of it. That's perfectly fine. But I don't think this watch is gonna make any huge splashes. And the thing about both of these watches, at least in my opinion, other than the rotating crown, there isn't a huge distinguishing feature um, that they have in terms of hardware that takes advantage of Android Wear 2.0. Now, maybe I'll get the watches in hand and I'll say that's not true. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the main thing I'm concerned about with both watches is the battery life. So the Sport has a reasonably sized battery. The Style has a much smaller battery, um, but the Sport is also packing you know, all that extra goodies. You got the GPS, the NFC, and LTE draining battery on a watch. Uh, I'm concerned about even getting through a full day. Right now, my Apple Watch and the Gear S3 Frontier, those were lasting me, those are lasting me two days. Um, 
I don't have to charge for two whole days, and that's pretty nice. So I'm hoping to finally get that from an Android Wear device, but I'm not sure that's gonna happen with my LG Watch Sport. So that's coming up next week, I'll have a review. This weekend, I do have a couple of videos uh, going up on the Huawei Mate 9. The first one's going to be my top nine, I don't know if it's gonna be top nine. I don't like to do top nine tips just because it's the number of the phone. Maybe top seven tips, because I actually can't think of two others. I wrote all of them down. Uh, top tips video for the Mate 9 for customization, kind of like I did with the Galaxy S7 Edge. I think the Mate 9 is a great phone, but it's one that you definitely uh, want to customize because there's still some quirky things with Huawei software. Uh, they have improved it a lot, but still something you want to customize in my opinion. I'll have that going up. And then uh, maybe one more vlog, and I do have a few case videos that I need to get going that I sort of let fall by the wayside uh, when I took my break earlier this year. So I have all that stuff coming up, uh, hopefully at least two videos dropping this weekend. And then uh, we have the big phone launches coming up, the S8, the LG G6, all of those things going on. So it should be a couple of interesting weeks coming up. If you guys want me to get the HTC U Ultra, comment below. I'll buy one of the international models if enough people really wanna see it. If you comment you wanna see it and say we get 15 or 20 people even that want to see it, uh, I will buy the HTC U Ultra and do a review of it early. That's probably the only way I'm going to get it. I'm not waiting until March because there's too many other phones coming out. Uh, that's about it. Um, so if you guys want to see that, drop a comment below. I'll check you guys out in the next video. You can follow me at Twitter, Google+, Instagram, at all the links below in the description. Also at dopetechdaily.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Later.